Good afternoon, everybody. It's Monday. And as you see, my right is not here. Uh, Greg is uh, out traveling, so he apologizes. But uh, he'll be back soon. He'll be sorry he missed these two uh. wonderful guests we have today. We have Linda Collins. Hello. Welcome. And <laughs> Les Degen. Degen. Deegan. Like, like the expressway. Like the deacon. Like, like a priest. Right. Like, the, like well, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the Jewish priest. Okay. So we have the two L's. The L's. Right? How do you do that? I don't know. Whatever. So um, it's nice to have you. We're uh, The weather is good. I love cool days because I hate the heat. Uh-huh. And um, I had a little bit of a crazy morning because the back end of the show isn't here today. So thank you, Jenny, for showing up and helping up. Helping out, and um, and we have our main man who does a great job, Justin. So thank you, Justin. He saved the day today. So L L is for you. You're an L too. Lucky. Yeah, right? I'm you lucky. Have all these wonderful people. I'm to lucky. Step up. I'm lucky in love. I'm lucky about a lot of things. But if you <laughs> asked me that about ten years ago, I was not so lucky. Uh oh. Uh oh. Things change. Time changes. So I don't know if you know, but every day is a national day. Do you guys know about that? I did not know about that. I didn't know that. So today is National Seatbelt Day. So make sure you do your seatbelt. Oh. Okay. National Family Pajamas Day. So if you want to hang out with your nephew, your niece, or your grandchildren, it's a good day to do that. Nice. It's Spicy Guacamole Day. I love guacamole. And it's National Pickle Day. It's Pickle Day. So buy a jar of pickles today (laughs) and share it with your significant other or your kids or your dog. It doesn't really matter who you share it with. But I do a lot of research on days when we're on the show. And you would be surprised how many days are national days. Yeah. You know? So, um... Well, wait a second. National Pickle, it's early this year, isn't it? I guess. But, you know, that's what it says. Today's November 14th. So, they change sometimes. But anyway, it takes a lot to get a national day. You just don't get it. People get behind it, like... These are people that are bored, I guess, with their life. Apply for that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Apply for national. And you know that's how it is. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, so everybody, we have Jenny already watching. Mariana, she's one of our fans who is uh, a senior and she loves the show. So thank you for watching, you guys. I saw your daughter the other day, Mariana. She looks good. So uh, anyway, how was the weekend? I usually ask Greg that, but it's an idea. (laughs) I had a great weekend. Oh, what'd you I do? I went to see Jim Altamori. <laughs> I'm into everything, let me tell you. He's a guest on the show. He does the music of Sinatra. Oh, all And right. we were lucky yeah. enough yeah. Um, to get the first row, because mm. he got us the tickets. And he sang with an 18-piece band. Night, nice. like a big band? Yes. yes. And so nice. it was so different mm-hmm. than when he sings here. Because he, you know, he just uses his little, right, you know, yeah. tool, and they put it on, and he sings the little karaoke tracks, exactly. like like what I use. Yeah, and um, not only was it, a, it was so nice to be there. I had the first row, which you know, wow. which was great. And then we met all his family, mm-hmm. so we were like in the after party. So okay. we had a ball. VIP. You were yes. the VIPs, yeah. and uh, it was great. And uh, they all know me from years because this band. Was part of the Breakfast Club. Uh, Sixteen years ago, he lost his corporate construction job, and he came to the Breakfast Club. Okay, and he said, "You know, I'm, I sing too." I'm like, "Okay, well then, every time we have a meeting, sing because everybody's depressed." And this has been going on for sixteen years. He's part of the club, yeah, yeah. and he also um, is he does construction work on the side. Mm-hmm. So I was sitting at the at the, my seat and met this very nice lady. I always talk to everybody. And she goes, oh, I said, how do you know Jimmy? She goes, oh, it's a weird story. I said, tell me the story. He was doing construction in her house, painting the walls and everything, and he was singing. And she said, oh, your voice is great. They became friends. And he, she goes to every concert. Wow. And that's what this show's about. Networking, talking yeah. to people, finding people. And that's really what it's about. And I love it when I hear a story like that because... If you don't talk to people, you don't know. If you don't ask, you don't know. And I always tell everyone, ask for the raise. What's the worst? They'll say no. Ask if you can go on that show. There you what go. Do they do? So that's my belief. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's how I got involved in pictures like you in films. I mean, I'm in three films. I can't believe it. And that all happened because of this and people like you coming on the show. Yeah. 
So Jim, Jim Story's great. So in other words, he was hammering in sheetrock, going, "I've got you exactly under my skin." And that's how he became friendly with this woman. And her and her husband were dolls. They said. I said, take my card. Maybe you'll want to come on the show and you might have a business. That's terrific. And that's how really the network goes. So let's talk about you first. Oh, okay. I mean, you guys met and you can see we have this yes, gorgeous, yes, yes. The Linda. gorgeous woman here. Charming, yes. Pretty. I love your hair. And every time I see you on Facebook, you're dressed to the noise. No. Oh, so you. you're a very attractive lady. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that. Susan's watching too. All the people at home are, that is supposed to be here are watching. Oh, well, hi, <laughs> Susan. Nice meeting you. Sorry you're not here. <laughs> okay, so Les, I know yes. you, you. I know you're a comedian. Yes, I, uh, I'm. A, I'm a comedian, a singer, an actor. And I know you came from corporate. And I, I came from the corporate world. I just retired two years ago from 41 years of uh, uh, corporate business to business, direct outside sales. Oh, so you would be, yeah, big so, big. so I could be a full time entertainer doing it part time, you know, on the side while I was like, I didn't, you know, hammer and sheet rock and sing, but I was, you know, selling mainly shipping and logistics services. Uh, for right. a Boston-based company called uh, Mercury. I like, see Peter. I gave you a plug on the show. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so yes, I'm a uh, I'm a uh, well. I do a lot of entertaining. I'm uh, in no particular order on the music side. I'm a uh, I'm a singer. I, uh, I sing a very interactive and engaging program of show tunes and standards uh, from the 20s through the 70s. There's naturally, you know, a funny element to it because I entertain, but also I, I go for the sentimental and love songs. And uh, I guess I mainly, my, my, my bread and butter is like senior audiences. Yes, yeah, well, right? I'm a I senior. I love, so. love, love entertaining seniors. And seniors are always happy. Well, most of the time. Well, I don't think you yeah. Get any complaints, do right, you? I try to bring them back to the good old days they love through the music because yeah, every do. song reminds them of a relationship or a different time. I don't know how many times after a show I'm packing up all my equipment and, uh, and I know a lady or a gentleman come up to me and say, you know, you know, put their hand on you and you know, yeah, while you're sitting I, there trying to like pack up and get home by three o'clock, you know, when they say, you know, you brought that one song you sang brought me back to a different time, uh, a different place. <laughs> and yeah. it just makes you feel so good. That, yeah, it uh, does, yes. So uh, I do that, I'm also, um, I perform with one of your friends, with uh, Anita. Anita Starlight. Anita you know Starlight. Les Deegan's going to give you a big blessed. plug. On she's the a blessed. Right. She sings. She's like a saloon singer. Yes. Like, okay. yeah. A really great fun. looking woman. Fun. And very and, she, and, and she's very funny, too. Oh, I know. Well, I know. So one of, my, uh, one of my comedy buddies, we'll get to the comedy last, but one of my comedy buddies, Stevie GB. Oh, uh, I love him. Right? He's one of my oldest, dearest uh, friends on the comedy circuit. Uh, him and his friend Joe Gellish, who's an accomplished uh, a pianist, and he's a singer also, started a, a duo called the Retirement Village People. Yeah, sings, they were all good-looking people. I've yeah, seen singing them. song parodies of songs from the 60s and 70s to reflect senior living, getting older. So uh, right before the pandemic, they decided to expand and get another guy and a gal, which they, they talked spoke to Anita. Right. She's so we, uh, we just had three great shows at the Elmont Library here. Yes. We uh -huh. were at Seaford Library. Newsday was there. And uh, in the coming weeks, we're going to have a, I still call it part two. It's yeah. not called part two anymore. Well, but Newsday, there's a whole article about us. Yeah, I know. I saw that. And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. we have some shows coming up. And not only that, you were in Lindenhurst. We were in Lindenhurst at yes. the South Shore Theater. Do you ever go up to down to Lindenhurst? They have like this little blo block, mm -hmm. all theater. Oh, and nice. there's a restaurant that we go to all the time called Gocio. It's oh. Italian. Oh, okay. It's good. great. And they have these little <laughs> studios where you could watch, you know, the play or the film. Mm -hmm. They fit about 60. Mm -hmm. But like it's good for people that don't want to go to the city and don't want to run around too much. Oh, like it's wonderful. You know, and yeah. we go now because we're enjoying it. But we see a lot of live uh, plays. Yeah. And then we see some films sometimes. That's where Jerry had uh, some films one, one night we went. The Hangout. Yeah. One of the Hangouts. And uh, it's packed. It's packed yeah. with people. But you know how many people don't know about it? A lot. Yeah, well, it's the job of the entertainers like us to yeah. spread the word. Yeah. And yes. Tell yeah. people well, there's a lot of... There's a lot of great talent on Long Island. I'll it's, tell you, uh, there really is. And, you know, since yeah, I'm involved now, not that I have that kind right. of talent, I'm having a ball because we're doing all these different things. Mm -hmm. Sure. So now what's your favorite place to um, 
you know, perform it. My favorite place to perform is wherever there's a wonderful audience that wants to have It doesn't a matter. Time. It doesn't matter where it if is. If it's a dirtbag bar, it doesn't matter. With, well, uh, <laughs> I've actually had some very good times at dirtbag bars. <laughs> really? Okay. That's mm -hmm. right. I, went, I once did a show at a dirtbag bar. This is on a comedy end mm -hmm. where I was there with like seven other comedians that just, I was totally not in their demographic of the place, but I was friendly with the producer. I did a show, it was a Sunday night starting at 10. I was still working at the time mm -hmm. and I was going, I did my thing and I was, I didn't do too badly. I'm going like, you know, what, what, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? And then lo and behold, somebody at the show, at the bar, lived in a 55 plus community oh, out and east said, we want and it you turned there. out that that was my demographic. So if I hadn't hung out on that sleazy dirtbag bar, you know, and done 12 minutes worth of jokes, I never would have gotten the other opportunities. So. Isn't that funny? Yeah, See well, that? that's, everything is, everything happens for a reason. I yeah, believe that. That's right. So you live in West Hampstead? No, 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 I thought no, you no. lived around I'm, here. Uh, I live in Seaford. Oh, I love it. Via Washington Heights, okay. Sunnyside, Queens, and now, and now Seaford. Do you go to Il Bocetto? Il Bocetto, I have gone there, Angela, yes. Angela, yes. Yeah, I know Anita sings there. Yes, and uh, it's delicious food. That's in, uh, it's season. funny on my on my birthday in March of 2020, we went there. That was the last place we went out to eat before the pandemic really kicked mm -hmm. in. Yeah. So that's uh, yeah. Best meal is lasagna there. Oh, okay. And then they make a dessert fresh, like a, it's unbelievable with phyllo dough and all. Oh, really right, right. and the owner's a sweetheart. I don't know she's her name. A doll. She's Angela. Uh, Angela. Angela, right, she's know terrific. Everybody. Angela, you're a sweetheart. She is. She's a doll. We were just there for Anita. We went to see her sing. I should, I should really. She's one of my teammates in the retirement village people. Yeah, she's a doll. She's a need a nap. That's her character in the show. Oh, okay. Well, I call her a need right. a And I'm, life. I'm less young. Less young. Get okay. it? Less young. So, uh, you guys are like hippies, right? In, in it. No, no. We're uh, well. We're. I mean, we we used to be, but now we're just uh, you know basic retirement. Uh, you know, like we live in you know fifty five plus community. The thing is, we're all like uh, we're all like grouchy, crabby, old. Like, oh, like, like grumpy men. Old grumpy, grumpy men. Grumpy men. Like mm -hmm. like like one of my songs. One of the parodies is you know Neil Young's um, "Old Man." Old man, take a look at your life. You know, he does that, all right? Mm -hmm. I sing the song. It's called "Young Man." <laughs> And it's, young man, take a look at your life. You're a pathetic slob. <laughs> Just a little. Right, exactly. I love your lyrics. <laughs> right, exactly. So So uh, you just take your what you want to say and you put it to music. And we put it to music, <laughs> yes. Next show is January 22nd, 3 p.m. at the Claro's Playhouse in Patchogue. Oh, that's a nice Did you like that little plug? I like that. So, is that, really that in so before you... I didn't get it. Okay. So now you always were um, a little bit of a comedian, and now you're a crazy uh, man. Yeah, yeah. I uh -huh. was. I guess I was always um, only child growing up, uh, immigrant parents. I was always short, and uh, I guess you know looking for attention. But um, I actually didn't start to. I mean, I was funny at summer camp, school, <laughs> but uh, then when when I was forty eight, uh, the temple that we belonged to did did, did shows. And, oh, they're uh, good for that too. And yeah. I auditioned, and I got uh, Fagan and Oliver. And it was a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And my first time really singing seriously, other than just kidding around and working with an orchestra and other actors. And then uh, the following year, I was Tevi and Fiddler. And uh, yeah, it so just, a uh, it went from there. So is this your third act? This is my... Because uh, yeah. I'm in my third, so I'm assuming it's at least your third. Um, so well, I think you're a little older than me, but I don't know, maybe uh, not. <laughs> well, that's, I'm a 54 baby. Can I say that? I... No, how old are you? I was born in 1954. Oh, so you're only 68. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can I give away? Can I say yes, that? Yes. Uh, I talk about my age all the time. Okay. You know what it means when you're on the seventh floor, right? On the seventh floor? Mm -hmm. You guys know what that means? Enlighten me. No. Yeah, 70. Oh. That's my line you, you for this what? year. I just turned 70. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in your early 40s, so you can't relate. But. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it makes absolutely no sense. Am I right? What? That, that I'm looking at the seventh floor? No, it doesn't. I mean, I'm, it's I'm, weird. I'm, I mean, I'm still in the sub basement having fun. <laughs> I can I'm imagine. Like, I'm like nowhere near. <laughs> you the look sub like you're very loose. Oh, oh, I'm yeah. <laughs> it's just a number. It is. It's it's, true. it's, it's just a number. It's so, true, uh, and I really believe that the, the older you get, the more fun you have. Yeah. If you finally get there and say, you know what, it's my turn. Yeah. You know, so that's the way I look. Yeah, at it. absolutely, and having a ball. Yeah.
So what, in your whole career, what was the most best thing you did that you loved so much? The best thing in, um, uh, let's see, the two things that, that pop out, probably playing Tevia in Fiddler on the Roof back in 1998 uh -huh. uh, was, was one of them. And then uh, another one was an obscure little thing, but it meant a lot. Um, a couple of years ago, I played uh, uh, Uncle Henry, the uh, guard at uh, Emerald City, and the wizard himself in a children's production of The Wizard of Oz at the Westbury Music Fair. That's a big And game. just, it was like to be on that stage after all the shows I've, I've been there, I guess, was... Uh, Pretty exciting. What, what was a thrill? So maybe uh, interesting how I didn't think I would think of those two things. But, yeah, uh, well, that's spur of the moment. Yeah. Always got to come up with the answer. Right, but if you talk to me on a Monday and... and might say something else. I might say something else because uh, what happened over the weekend or, you know, the day before that is... Uh, so I guess you don't miss the corporate world. I don't. Most people don't. I, yeah. I don't, but I'm still a salesman. Yeah. We're, we're all in sales because, you know... He's selling your show. The, right. the gigs don't just, you know... Come. Well, some come to you, but you still have to make the calls and... Um, and then with the Laughter Saves Lives, the uh, uh, we were talking about that, that before the show, one yes. of the comedy producers, uh, John LaRocchia, he's a retired firefighter of 21 years, lost 19 guys in the South Queens firehouse yeah, on 9-11, yeah. started a comedy fundraising organization to, to help raise money for people in charities need while remembering his guys. So um, I help him look for sponsors. So I'm a salesman there. I'm yes. still on the phone yeah, I can and see that. doing elevator connected. pitches and setting up meetings and following up and answering objections, all those wonderful sales yeah. things. So, I, know, uh, I get it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we're, we're always selling, right? right. I'm, I'm yeah. like selling right now, can't you tell? <laughs> <laughs> now, are you, um, your family here? Like in seafood? Yeah, yeah, I have a beautiful wife of 38 years. Nice. We met through the personal ads in New York Magazine. And that it worked. Very, and it worked, it was exciting. And uh, I have three adult kids. My younger daughter lives in South Korea with her husband. Jeez. Right. And, you get uh, there or no? What? You get we, there? we haven't been there yet, uh, you know, with the whole pandemic thing and whatever, but now it's kind of chilling a little bit. So you might be hopefully, hopefully next year. Well, Samantha will come in next year, I promise oh, you. How nice. And then I have an older daughter, Liz. Did you know my daughter, Liz? Liz Deegan? Probably. She's uh, very involved in a lot of Long Island networking. Yeah, She's a, I know her. I know the name. Photographer, web designer, graphic designer. Yeah, See, Liz, I told you I'd give you the plug. Tell okay. her to call me. Maybe we have work okay. for her. You never and, know. And she's in Long Beach. And my son. Oh, and, Long Beach. That's the place to live. Yeah. And uh, my I son. I never went to Long Beach until I, until I started dating this man that I'm dating for you and a half. First time I ever went to Long Beach. Mm -hmm. oh. My sister says to me, my daughter says to me, I'm like, what are you doing in Long Beach? You never went there before. I never went, but it's really nice. Oh, I, I never wonderful. went. I always thought there's no way to park. You know, and I don't like to walk. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so I never went. And now we go a lot. And he loves it there. So I get to go a lot of places in Long Beach. Now. Wonderful. Yeah, I never went to the beach either. Until no. I met this man. No, I didn't like beaches. Now we go to the beach. I don't swim or anything like that. Well. But we go. You know, a lot of things I'm doing that I never did before. Yeah, good for you. And my daughter's just like, Ma, you're like a caged, you're caged animal that got out of a cage all of a sudden. Where are you going now? So last night we were out. We went to the show. And we didn't want to eat. So we went to McDonald's and we had we ate in the car. So I called my daughter. I go, guess what? We're sitting in the car eating McDonald's like two kids. She goes, you're freaking crazy, Ma. <laughs> and it's just funny because all of a sudden nothing's a big deal. You know? Yeah, right. And everything's simple. Simple is good, less is more, you know. And that's what my life's like now. So it's kind of nice. But I had quite a, you know, stressful life with corporate. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Were you in corporate? No. You never were? No. Okay. It's a, it's a crazy you. world out there. Yeah. And it's harder for women than men. Mm -hmm. Because believe it or not, I love women. But I love women's women. Like, you're a woman's woman. Mm -hmm. But then there's those others. Oh. That'll oh, kill oh, you. Oh, oh, yeah. I you know, know? I know the type. Yes. Yeah. So it's so different when you're in your own business because then, you know what? You just say, you know what? I don't really care. That's right, because you're the macher. Yeah, and they come here <laughs> when we have a meeting. If they have an attitude, there's the door. We mm -hmm. don't have bitches in the breakfast club. Yeah. And that's how it started and that's how it is. Yeah. But we didn't ever get too many, you know. Right. So it's just diff different how your life. So you're in your third act then. 
So I guess, yeah, I guess the third act. And, uh, but this is, uh, I mean, I've always dreamt of being a, a full-time entertainer. And, it's, and uh, you would seem to be doing that. Oh, yeah, no, I'm very, I'm very busy. I have lots of stuff uh, on the table. So, uh, That's good. So when, what do you have coming up uh, in the next two weeks? Oh, let me think. Okay, I have, uh, I have I'm, I'm prepared. I got it all. Let's see, in the coming weeks, um, on the music side, uh, tomorrow I'm at Affinity Skill Living in Oakdale. Mm -hmm. And uh, Friday I'm at the Bristol and East Meadow. And I have a lot of, uh, mainly see assisted living, but uh, coming up um, for public shows on Wednesday the 30th, I'm at the... Uh, a Suffolk wide Jewish Boy, community you're really center. Busy. I'm, I'm gonna, I need all your contacts. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hook you up. Don't worry. Thank and then, you. Uh, and then another public show on uh, what is it? Uh, uh, January 14th at the Massapequa Library, at the Central Avenue. Uh, the Time and Village people. Our next show I mentioned is January 22nd, 3 p.m. at the Claro's uh, Playhouse in Patchogue. In April, we're at the Amityville Library, uh, Freeport Library libraries. in May. Yeah. And last but not least, on the comedy side, Owen, you're going to love this. Uh, this Thursday with Laughter Saves Lives, um, we're doing a show at the Raymore and Flanagan Furniture and Mattress Showroom in Farmingdale to that's, raise money for um, that's nice for Laughter Saves Lives and General Needs, a veterans organization. Friday, after Thanksgiving, I will be at Larry's Pub in Valley Stream where the telling hell jokes on, on Rockaway <laughs> Avenue. That's where I live. So uh, we'll see. We'll see if it's a seven dollar cover. We'll see if we can get Valentina yeah, to get off the couch of, and come see yeah, me tell really. jokes. Yes. And then uh, let's see the last one of the year. Uh, well, unless other stuff comes up, uh, I'll be at Samantha's a little bit of heaven in uh, East Northport. It's a uh, squeaky clean comedy show. I'm not always squeaky clean. Well, I know some of them they but talk on, very bad. On this one, it'll be uh, it'll be their holiday show, and looking forward to that. So. Uh, so a lot going on, and if can I tell my website in case sure. people well, want to see? Well, we have it up there, but where, how can people reach you and look uh, at all your stuff? Yeah, if you want to see uh, where I'm going to be, uh, just go to www.lessdegan.com and uh, wonderful website that my daughter Liz put together for me. Thank you. Yeah, and she uh, you can like see uh, you can see some clips. You can see some of the places I'll be performing, and uh, I hope to see you at a show. Okay, yeah. thank you, Les. Very good. All right. You can hang out though. You're not leaving. No, are you, are you kidding? Okay. And and, and Miss Linda's miss story. All this beautiful woman and all the things she's done. I can't wait to hear this. So first question: How did you meet Debbie? I met Debbie at a film festival in um, the city in in Manhattan, and um, let's see, it that was about nine, uh, nineteen. That was one, two, three years ago. So whenever that was, 2019, 2018, something like that. And um, one of her films was screening that was just so enormously beautiful. Um, I think it was called The Choice mm -hmm. for The Waiting Room. She has two that I, that I particularly love. And, um, I, you know, we, we met then but didn't really get to know each other that much. But mm -hmm. um, just over the years, um, through uh, we had a mutual friend, John Gallagher, and... Um, you know, we knew each other a bit right. through John, mm -hmm. and just seeing her around the film circuit. Yeah, she's an amazing. She's lady. amazing. She's yeah. written a few books too. Yeah, she's yes. very, very so prolific. creative yeah, and very, uh, so sweet too. Amazing no. writer, amazing yes. director, yes. creative. And her husband is so quiet, but yet he's so amazing too. He's an amazing DP. He and, knows and so much. They two, they were a couple that do films yeah. everywhere. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. so. So, you know, what's the kind of app character you love playing? I know you play, you know, smart woman, you play BBs, you play sweet. I, you know, let's talk about I what kind of roles. <laughs> no, I'm, you play tough. I do play sweet, though, sometimes. I mean, yes, actually, that last film that. that you yes, you were very for, sweet. I, was, I remember you were talking sweet. to the guy. He yeah. loved you, right? Right. I and was, then you yeah. kind of, he left because what did you do? Right. Well, when no. he walked out on you, what was that? Well, now you have to come see the movie to find out. <laughs> oh. but, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was a sad moment. That, yeah. That little scene was a very sad. But we got into it. We were watching it and we're like, we got to see this. Like you get into it when you really see it happening in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the scene, it was really... So amazing bringing that particular scene to life. That was, I mean, 
I don't really have a favorite scene from that movie called The Prof. That's The Prof. So the prof, it's in right. post-production mm -hmm. right now, and hopefully we'll have it on the film circuit. That's Debbie wrote. And yeah, that, next year, that right? Film. Yeah. This coming year. Mm -hmm. And what yeah. about this this year? What what movies? So this um, this year I have um, two series going right now that I'm um, I'm a series regular on one. It's called Click. Click. Uh huh. And it's a um, LGBTQ. Um, get the. I actually know how to say all these things. B I P O C. So you yeah, have to. I got all of the. Uh, I got all of it um, yeah, together. Um, and written by um, Ish Brown, directed by him as well. And so the shooting just started for that series actually this past weekend. So how was so it? That's right? very. That's it. It went great. That's it, what kind of a role do you play? Well, <laughs> it just so happens that I don't play a sweet person at all in that one. No, no, I play um, a boss. So I'm the boss of a um, magazine called Elegance Magazine. Oh, okay. It Is it a magazine about LG? Um, no, LG? no. The the, uh, the many of the characters, uh, the the clique of, of people are um, LGBTQ. Right. Um, and uh, so it, it really is bringing awareness to that, you know, mm -hmm. of that community in the world, which I, I love that. And um, but no, my nemesis is one of the um, group of the five that are the clique. Mm -hmm. And so she and I are, are butting heads as, um, you know, she works for my company mm -hmm. and she wants to get her own company. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's just one of the kind of shoot offs of the story. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the series. Another series I'm shooting right now um, was written by Omar Moore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once again, fabulous writer, director. And I play a mob boss type of a person oh okay so my husband was the mob boss. you should see the look on your face right? no no, no and, I'm, and I'm, I just, okay I'm, i'll be nice you're like i'll be nice <laughs> no I'm, I'm just taking this all in this sounds great <laughs> isn't it wonderful yeah oh my gosh yeah so to so the mob <laughs> actually the red dress of one of the pictures you posted for for this yes that was great That's i got a character i got that. a lot of comments on that you <laughs> and the red dress they're saying you look great you look great it's not me but i'll take the compliment <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the from paper yes that's, that's for that other um, series and I have another series that Dan, Dan uh, Guidon and I um, are uh, working on and kind of in pre-production and a couple of movies coming that are going to be shooting in the Let's spring be, you know you get more excited for each one you, you know how does that work you get as you like you like playing the bitch <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, she said that's what she plays, right? The top boss. I mean, it does happen. Yeah. You know, you, you um, get into careful, it. Careful, right? you're on parole. <laughs> <laughs> I play strong characters. I would say I play strong women, like even in The, the Prof with um, Debbie mm -hmm. uh, Markowitz and um, on that one. And, and Luke Hassel was, uh, Lucas Hassel was the leading man. Um, e even in that one, she was very strong. I mean, she owned, um, you know, the character Marigold on the movie theater. Yes. She was mm -hmm. very strong. And, you know, she was fine with life, you know. And then along comes the prop, you know. And so yes. things got kind of <laughs> turned around. for, mm -hmm. And then we got to the scene that you saw. You know, there's no, um, one is for me not better than another. There's just, just all, it's so interesting to delve into the, the the minds and, and the thoughts. And to be that character. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting to me. And and then to see what the other, your other actors are mm -hmm. bringing to their to the table. So, right. So when you bring it to life and these amazing stories, I, I, I'm always amazed by writers that can come up with these fabulous Yes, and the true stories, stories. are also very... Um, oh, yeah. I mean, we saw too. some films, at, uh, Ferretti films. That's mm -hmm. I work with Jerry Ferretti, too. Mm -hmm. And some of them, they were true stories. They were just heartbreaking. Yeah. But then when you meet the family there at the film festival, they're so happy to have brought it to that level. Right. It's like maybe a 26-minute film okay. about somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of, um, it's endearing. It really is. And then these same people come every year, so it's like a little family. Yeah. And that's what has happened to me in three years. I All I did was volunteer to be at the film festival three years ago. And now I'm a big part of it. 
Yeah. And I did it because of my book, because I want my book to be a movie someday. Uh, and that was a big thing. Like, I want to be, yeah. I want to be just like the Breakfast Club movie with mm -hmm. the kids. Only I want to be the oldsters. Okay. Because we got in trouble, thrown out of a diner when we were looking for jobs. And I called the press, and that's how we became popular. Oh, this is going to be great. So yeah. my movie someday will be just like the Breakfast Club movie, only with oldsters. From Fire to Freedom, starring Les and Linda. Yeah. Coming to a theater near you. <laughs> so that's how I got involved, because of my big ideas, you know. And this book here is from when I lost the first job in media. And this is called In Love and Friendship, but it's about my, myself and my best friend. Mm. And how we met this pretty little girl uh, in a bar where her grandmother was crying. And we met her and she was dying from, um, she needed hyperbarics. You know what that is? Mm. It's a yeah, big like, unit that you put a person in that's having trouble breathing. Uh, and there was no benefits. Is it, is it like the iron lung? Something like that. Oh, okay. And so anyway, that's how we met her. And so you can see I grew a lot because this was my first book and uh, this yeah. is my second book. But anyway, every time something happens to somebody that's a crisis, the best thing you could do is write. Put it yeah. in the drawer. Write the thing, put it in the drawer. And that's how this whole thing. Now, everyone in my book wrote their own book because mm. there were all these women in the book and that they were taught how to do it and they became like part of my book and now they wrote their own. So we also publish books at the uh, Breakfast Club too ah, with okay. Red Penguin, which is a big publisher. And she lives right down the block too. It's very funny. You don't know who your neighbors are mm -hmm. because so many people do so many things, you know? Oh, true. true. So, but, um, you know, the whole movie thing became very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And then when I meet people like you that have been doing it forever and ever. <laughs> so now are you in that union? It's called AFTA or whatever that is. Um, you know, I actually have only been, I, as a, as a high school student, I starred in the class play. But I a figured lot of that. People star in the class, you know, class play. I mean, I was happy to do it in yes. high school. But then I spent many years as a full time professional musician. Oh, so, so you play music? Yeah, I play. Um, for, I used to play French horn full time professionally in symphony orchestras. I actually did Fiddler on the, uh, on the Fiddler Rooftop on the roof. with Herschel Bernardi in Chicago years ago. Oh, oh, um, her, my, my. And, and then. Um, you know, did that for many, many years, and I also played piano, so oh. I was doing that as well. Oh, how so, exciting. So now I still play piano and sing and arrange things. I'm a music director. That's I direct wonderful. little kids and plays and stuff like that. So that the, my point of saying that was because I, I really haven't done acting forever and ever. It's like I'm a second career actor right. person. But you know, it's like some I people bet you're having it, it later. You're having a ball though, right? Oh yeah, I've been doing it about, about so you're 12 in your years. second chapter. Yeah, I've always been a performer. So it mm. wasn't like I was in a corporate job and then I went mm -hmm. to all of a sudden I'm a performer, which people do that very successfully. Oh, so definitely. nothing wrong with that. But mm -hmm. I was always a performer. Then you know So you've changed your gigs a little. Yeah, mm -hmm. I always wanted to I mean I remember just being in the pit when when I was in the Winnipeg Symphony and other and other groups I was in, other orchestras, and I'd be looking up and going, I should be up there. Oh. <laughs> and you know, it's like what I say about this. I see all these people, like, it's very hard to get on the regular news, you know. I've been on a few, but yeah. Channel 4, I want to be on with the book lady, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, okay. the book lady on Channel 4. Yeah. It's very hard to get on. I and bet you'll matter, get there. I will, because I, I usually do get there. And um, I keep saying, oh, it's going to be me. And then I'll see someone, the book is so boring. I'm like, how did they get on? You know how they get on? It's one connection, just one. Yeah. And it's very hard to get the name of the producer of the segment. Mm. But if you just have one, mm -hmm. and that's how you get it. I mean, it's silly, but it is. Yeah. It's really how it works. So, you know, you learn different things, you know, oh, even with getting a job. Yeah. You know, like... When you would look for your jobs, was it people that you would get them from for the music and things like that? You knew people, that's how you would get in um, to play the music and do the things you wanted? Not well, depending on the job. Um, when, when you're a, this is probably it's slightly boring, so I'll make it fast, but when you get a symphony job, you have auditioned, and it's a full-time job, it's contracted. Oh. You've auditioned, you've won a, a national or and or an international audition. So I did it's that. big. So yeah, several times. Big, big, big. Groups. There's a lot of competition. Yeah. Think of all the people that would like to get that though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it right. was a great life, you know. It mm -hmm. just, uh, 
just uh, wanted to do something else. So do you still sing a little bit or oh, play? I sing, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I play. Well, we uh, could music listen to you to, sing. Uh -huh. We want to listen to you what, sing. What kind of, what kind of I, stuff do you sing? Um, well, I am really much more of a piano player than a singer, mm, but I do sing. Um, I sing um, mainly contemporary Christian music. Nice. Um, and, uh, you know, I do arranging and I do a lot of the harmonies for mm. for our band, North Song. So do you do and some things for Christmas still? Yeah, I have a very busy Christmas really? schedule. Really? Yeah, I have, I have a, a another uh, position as a music director, and so I'm very, very busy oh. right right now and is it long long island new york everywhere it's um new jersey new jersey that's oh. the place i never go to oh. but i have to say <laughs> i've done you know I've, I've done shooting out here a few times yes i love long island it is and long island i feel like i'm like an honorary i feel like well i don't know what i think about you know past lives but i feel like i feel some kind of an affinity I, yes for most long island do. Well, and um, I feel like I should be an honorary you should citizen be. of Long Island. <laughs> you should be. Well, I even tried to get the job. I love Long Island. I love Long Island. <laughs> okay, and I thought I go. should have gotten it because yeah. I say it the way you're supposed to say it. Uh, I love Long Island. Yeah. But they got a younger, very beautiful girl for mm -hmm. it. But again, it's another thing that, you know, I tried, but. You know, if you don't try, you don't know. You don't know. See, that, and that's the point of the show where you should be rolling in the Steinway Grand and say, Linda, would you like to accompany Les and have him do a couple of tunes? And right. we and could do a have... duet next time. Yes, but it's all part of, you know, just kind of spur of the moment, yeah. make something happen. Can, can, I, can I ask a quick question? Of course. Because uh, you play with the Winnipeg. I, I played with Winnipeg Symphony for years. Yeah. In Jeez. Canada? In Canada. Are you from Canada? No. No, I just went up how, there. How did I, you get? Well, that's you, you have your network oh, with, okay. the, you know, right. with the International Musicians Union. And I auditioned and won the audition. And, you know, I was a kid. So did you have, did you have to move to Canada? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I lived there for many years and then wow. moved to Toronto. and did, did. So you're a traveler. Yeah, I've, I've been. You have family, place. kids, or are you I, married, or are you my single? My children are named Nola Bell and Solomon. How nice! <laughs> are they? Uh... They're toy poodles. Oh, <laughs> oh you've got an animal. People love them. Oh. I okay. love my I love my babies, and um, yeah, Wonderful. so that's uh... well, that's a big market today. They're opening up more and more of these dog hotels. Oh yeah, just here on Long oh, Island. Yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable. People I mean, love their. I mean, my. Uh, I love my dog so much it's ridiculous and I think most people that have dogs um, feel that way yes. you know they just we just they're our family you know? yeah see I'm allergic to dogs so oh no yeah but I don't hate them but <laughs> they make me sick they, so, don't, they don't like you either no they don't no I'll, dogs don't like me something. and they when I know. go to my yeah. daughter's which I'm going for Thanksgiving yeah my daughter gives her dog yeah. Xanax because Aww. the dog is he doesn't like me. What kind of Aww. dog does it? It's you... uh, some kind of a mix of something. Oh, okay. But it's All big right. and hairy, and so I can't even sleep there. No. Oh. So she gets me a hotel down the block, which is fine. But you know, she says, "Don't kick the dog. Don't." You know, as soon as I get in, the dog goes wild. Aww. So she gives him Xanax before I come. Well, he knows. Yeah. The dog knows. Yeah. That, you know. But everyone in my family has a dog. Yeah. My cousins, my aunts. Yeah. I'm the only one that doesn't because when we were young, we didn't. Italians didn't have dogs, uh -huh. you know, but the kids do now, you know, because now it's so different. Mm -hmm. You know, kids don't do anything that the parents taught them. They do what they want, you know, mm -hmm. yep. so that's just the way it is. It is the way it is. Yeah. So when you're, you know, tired mm -hmm. and you need a break, because mm -hmm. I know acting mm -hmm. is tough. Mm -hmm. What do you do to take a break? Do you do like go to spas or do you just sit home with a bottle of wine uh, you probably well, don't want to listen to music because you play it <laughs> <laughs> yeah um well when, when i've really had enough of and i just really have to have a break just have to have a real break um i try to you know go to to the um to the coastline or to the down, beaches the beaches mm -hmm. i love going down to pompano beach actually Ooh. um but you know you can't go there every other week that's, yeah <laughs> that's right. a once a year thing but just like anywhere near the water mm -hmm. um when i'm trying to you know recenter right um, right because it's of, stressful isn't it oh, yeah i mean all, all performing and um is there's a lot of stress and which is not negative stress necessarily it's just a very you know it's a 
very rewarding, but it, you know, it's a lot of work. Sure. It's a lot of work. It's more, yeah. it's more work than it looks like when you're looking at people doing it sure. well. Sure. You know. Yeah, well, the first time I was, I'm in the series now called The Fontanas. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm with Jerry Peretti now. I'm, I've done already three episodes. Good for you. The first one, Good. I thought he'd kill me. Ah. Because I couldn't remember the lines. And they'd have to do it over and over. Right. Did you study? Yes. I just can't do it. You know, you can do it. And then I finally got a feel for it. But I, I couldn't believe one episode, because of me, took the whole day. Because other people are in it. So they had to do it over. I figured I was done. I was a goner. Yeah, but well, you you have to you have to know the other person's lines too because yes. you, you have to know, have to know and then they would say to me in the right. beginning you have to you're know talking your to the wrong person that's your son you know so but he had a lot of patience with me <laughs> yeah. and now you know we're on our third episode and I'm having a ball congratulations and I'm playing an yeah. Italian mama so what's better than oh, that yeah, for me oh great. my great goodness role for you. yes <laughs> and I have role. four sons that hate me <laughs> and four daughter-in-laws that hate me. And everybody doesn't hate me normally. Do you give people the evil eye? I'm just a pain. I'm oh, okay. All right. Pain mothers. And I don't get Fun. up. So my daughter Fun. laughs. She says, well, my, you know, the role isn't all that off, you know. Because, oh. you know, when you get older, you pass the baton. Well, you seem so sweet. I can't yeah. imagine you being an intimidating no, I, character. No, I can be. <laughs> and also, I could be, you know, I don't like to do all the stuff I used to. Yeah. I gave it up at 50. Turned the baton. Everybody else does everything else now. Because right. when you cook for Italian family, you know what that's like. And you clean and you do everything all the time. You get tired of it. So at 50, we just boom. Yeah, enough already. So I don't yeah. do holidays anymore. It's the greatest. You just get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then your work is done. Yes. You get to go enjoy. <laughs> so I'm going to have a very nice week. They're going to do all kinds of things for me in Maryland. Excellent. So she goes, can't you take the bus? I said, no. She's coming to get me. I'm very yeah. lucky. She's driving here to get me and bring me back. Where's that going to be? Maryland. Oh, in Maryland. It's three okay. hours on a bad, nice. on All a right. good day. Nice. So, but I am very blessed with the, uh, my daughter and her wife, who's another woman, and I have two daughters now. So, I, got, I went from one to two. So, mm -hmm. I've been through lots of change. Mm -hmm. Lots of change. So, Ever I'm, I'm going to have to read this book. Yeah, when my husband passed, a lot of things happened. That was four years ago. But my books were in the drawer. Mm -hmm. I just never, that wasn't, this one. Right. I never really had the time to get it done. And mm -hmm. That was it. Once he passed, I'm like, boom. Mm -hmm. And that's how, that's how it happened to me. And that's how it happens for a lot of people. Like, you're busy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. As busy yeah. as you probably didn't think you'd be, right? You know, it, it, it's interesting. When, I, when, when we were looking at, my wife also retired from her. She was a, a teacher. Oh, so we, we were both, she was, you know, I was, I was ready to say, you know what, life, I'm, I'm not getting younger. I'm doing all the showbiz on the side. Yeah. I would love to just do that, you know, do this full time and not go into the city back and forth in a suit every day, although I'm wearing a suit today yeah, I like it and too. go and meeting with CFOs and appointments and meetings and this and do showbiz. And so we both retired at the same time. And it's interesting. I tried to envision what it would be like to be doing this full time and all of a sudden now it, it it's there and it's just so there every it, day it's interesting and but it, it took a while and then uh, especially over the last it's been like a mm -hmm. almost two years now right you know they're not i'm saying like wow i'm like that's great i'm like doing it so yeah. but well, yeah but you, you, you don't really you, no until it, until you until yeah, I take life now a day at a time because yeah i used to be a wreck i used to worry 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 no, not worth and it. you know what once you make that change you know then Every day's a gift, and you take it from there. Yep. Exactly. You know? So exactly. so what's in the uh, plans for you for your future? More and more of this, I'm sure, right? It's more and more of it. This is my joy, you love my it, passion, right? at acting, music, at, you know, performing. That's me. That's just have me. you been to Europe? I have. Uh, I actually played a concert at the Temple of David in Israel. How nice. Yeah. Wow. Um, you get around, well, Linda. <laughs> You definitely get around. And um, she says that so matter-of-factly. Yeah. I'm in a temple in Israel. I was with yeah. the Winnipeg Orchestra. Let's see. What else did I do? Did you meet the These Pope? These are great things. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, maybe it, I'm sure it didn't come easy. I, I mean, I'm I'm definitely a, a workaholic. Yes. Well, a lot of us are. It's yeah. the way we are. We're built that way. Oh, yeah. But, you know, when you have a passion for something, 
um, we all know. We it's all, the best thing. Yeah, it's it's not work. It's just what you have a passion for. So that's where you're you're drawn. It's right. not like, oh, I have to go work now. It's just like, okay, now I'm doing what I do. And this is what I do. And then it well, just, yeah. you know. Sometimes, it, yeah, passion can be viewed as being too pushy. Right. Well, my daughter tells me that all the time. She goes, why are you yelling? I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not yelling. The phone doesn't work that great. I'm just talking. You know, mm-hmm. but it can be. So you have to be careful. I know I have to be careful because I have a passion for a lot of things. Why aren't you sponsoring people? Yeah. Why not? Let me tell you why you should. You know, so you yeah. have to take a step back when you're like me. Mm-hmm. But you're very calm. So, you you know, I, I your passion is in, I mean, the way you speak, it's just you're the knowledge, you have the knowledge and you know what you're doing. You know, so your passion is positive. Sometimes uh, yeah, passion yeah, can positive. be negative yeah. if you're too passionate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I am. You're right. I'm generally calm. I'm pretty yeah. um, perceptive. You know, <laughs> I learned one thing because I never used to let people talk. Ah. Uh, you know, and Greg accuses me of it all the time. Like he's mm-hmm. usually sitting here, and he'll always, you know, forget it. You'll See, he nice. has he has a board down here. Thank God it's not up today. When uh, we do the show, uh-huh. there's a board right here between us. Oh. I'm not allowed to look at over his shoulder and look at what he's, you know. Hearing oh. from people. Really? No, he's character, but we get along great. Okay. But again, he's taught me a lot. Like, listen, you need to listen more than, you know. Well, it yep, yep, yep. sounds based on today that we don't need that board anymore. Because, well, when I'm alone, I don't need the board. Right, because you you did it. Yeah. You did it. But he actually kept saying, I'm getting one. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, it arrived, this big board right on the table. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, very nice, you know. But we get along great. We're almost like a Bonnie and Clyde kind of thing. And he's much old. You know, I'm much older than him. So so, like, sorry I didn't get to meet him. meet him next time. He's like a son today. I never had. Oh, nice. Yeah, he is. Yeah, Very And he's nice. handsome, too. Oh. I met him in the dry cleaners. Like the That's hand- how I met him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he's I, been I taking need- you to the cleaners <laughs> ever since. No, I meet people in very odd places. He mm-hmm. smelled delicious. He had great cologne on. He dressed to the nines. And I said... Mm-hmm. You gotta come on my show. And he goes, Why? I'm like, just because. And that's look at you. You're like, look at you. And then he was kind (laughs) enough. We used to go to diners with my car, which is a jalopy at then. Right. And carry our stuff into different places. Oh, okay. And he gave us a home. And that's after I met him, he became my co host and this is our home now. The Breakfast Club has What a great story. It is. He's a great guy. He really, really is. So um you'll meet him next time. He would love to meet both of you. Really, you would have. So now you live in New Jersey? I do. I live in New Jersey. So you travel all the way back uh, and forth a lot. Um, I, well, when I need, you know, when I have a shoot to go to, I go to the shoot. If I have an in-person audition, I go to an in-person audition. Right. Um, I like to go in the city anyway. Yeah, yeah the I love city's the, city. the best. Yeah, love the city. <laughs> Some friends of mine a couple of days ago said, oh, do you want to get up and if I can go for a walk through the woods with us? And I was just, you know what? I will go through a uh, walk through the city happily, yeah. window shopping, stopping. Well, you get bit in the woods. <laughs> you get bit. And then you're going to have a bite, and then you got to go to the doctor and get medicine. Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful. It's a nice time of the year if yeah, you like it's, it. It's beautiful, but yeah, I'd rather walk in the city. Thank yeah, you. I don't like the woods either. <laughs> Or the beach. I'm, I'm actually uh, going, uh, since I retired from working in Times Square. Um, I've been to the city maybe three times, all for comedy shows, and I'm going in on Wednesday to meet my uh, uh, my old my old boss is going to be in from Boston, so oh, we're going to have nice lunch, lunch together, and it's oh, it's going to be wonderful. Those so, are the best uh, ways to go. To looking the forward to uh, taking the railroad and uh, yeah. getting the good old days. Right? Good, Back like the, the like the, like the good old days, but I don't want to do it every day. Exactly. Yeah. Very true. Do well, do you drive those those things in the city now? They have those bikes, so you don't have to drive. I no, I haven't done that. Yes, I've seen, it's something yeah, I've new. Seen, I've seen those. Um, no, I love the subway. And... <laughs> you love the subway? This girl's crazy. Who loves uh, the subway? Well, I mean, I, I used to be actually afraid to ride the subway like years ago, but yeah, no, I love the subway. It's so easy. You just think you're there. You yeah. all those steps and yeah. Well, you're in good shape. Yeah, She's in good shape. Yeah. <laughs> I used to ride the F train many years ago oh. when I worked in Manhattan. Oh, the good old F train, yeah. sure. Oh, never forget it. 
Well, the great thing about, you know, being in a city too is if, if you just for some reason just can't do the subway at that moment and it's too far to walk, you yes. don't have time to just grab cab. Yeah. yeah. And they have those things where you sit and the guy, you know, is on the bike and he's Oh, the, 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 the that what? too. Yeah, yeah. Imagine when I get in there, the guy's like, I'm like, you sure you can do this? <laughs> he says, no problem, no problem. Then he did. I was like, it was fun. The hair's blowing. The there you go. Really fun. I've never Different. done that. It would Try be fun. It. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. But it's actually quicker because cabs, there's so much traffic all the time. Yeah. Uber, uh, Uber's big now. You, have you ever done an Uber? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That's yeah. nice and easy. But sometimes they're very bad drivers and they drive like maniacs. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so you know, I do well, Ubers that. into the city and the and Queens. I don't go over the bridge. That's why I said I don't do Jersey. Oh, okay. And oh, okay. because I'm afraid, I don't know why. Afraid of a bridge? I feel like the car is gonna go off. Or oh, you know, oh, yeah. gonna pull okay. off the bridge with the car, and so I don't do bridges. But well, I we'll should get, graduate. We'll get you one of the doggies and exes, and yeah. we'll make it easy for you to do. I have that. to graduate to do bridges. I, I mean, I've graduated a lot. When I when I was younger, I used to take the railroad okay. to Port Jefferson. It took an hour and fifty minutes both ways because my best friend moved out there. Okay. And then I finally graduated and took the car and drove nice. out there on Northern State. There and now go. I do it all the time. But you know, back then I was like, you know, a fart. You know, like one of those mothers with the kids that never went out and did okay. Anything. So I was a fart. That's what I was telling you. I used to be a fart. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're not one now. No, I'm not one now. That's very sure. Yeah. I tell the truth. I don't know. Sometimes it gets oh, you in trouble. But oh, my God. What's the bad thing, right? Oh. It's, it's the real life. You know, that's what's nice about having your own show. Yeah. You can oh. say what you want. You should always tell the truth. Yeah. yeah. You truth. run the show. You run the show. Well, <laughs> with Greg, I mean, we do it together, though. Greg's a great... Right. Right. If you tell the truth, you never have to try to remember what you yeah. said, right? Cause, and then, you know, the, we use this, a lot of people use this for parties, and then they decorate, like, themes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Halloween, it was gorgeous. They had it decorated so nice. And Christmas, it's very pretty in here, too. I'm Paul, sure. and this is yeah. where we met, you and I. Yes, this right is here. where we met. And everybody was so nice on the set. Yeah, beautiful And set. I, I, was, I was sitting at the bar in a scene drinking a beer. Oh, I yeah. never drank a beer in my life. So my daughter's like, what are you doing today? You know, she just cracks up because I'm doing so many oh things I never used to do. <laughs> yeah, you were right over yep. there mm -hmm. and I was right over there, yeah. I remember. And you know, yeah. when they're doing the scene, it's so many cameras and people. Right. And cameras and people and yeah. lighting. But and everybody was so nice and that's what mm -hmm. really counts. So this so, is where it all started for you guys. Well, I knew Debbie before, oh. but this is where I met this beautiful yeah. lady. Do you remember how we met? We uh, I know we're Facebook friends. Yeah. But didn't someone through networking? Yes, networking. But I don't. Do you I, go to David Gusson? To who? David Gusson. You should go if you don't know. About no. Him. Yeah, he's great. The biggest mentor I've ever oh, had. Oh, all right. But some, someone did. Yeah, I think we yeah. were LinkedIn first. Probably and... from when I used to be a governor. Maybe that, maybe that was yeah. it. Okay. Well, when, whatever when, it is, when I'm. When my I'm, show started. I'm glad we met. Yeah, I was. Um, I couldn't do business there. It was, you know, you know about governors, right? Yeah. Um, so I couldn't do business there. And then, you know, it's all men. And, you know, some of the shows are a little bit about, you know, women things. So I wanted it to be businessy. So it was hard. And now we do everything. So now we do business. We do oh, everything oh, the, group. Okay, the governor, the, ra the radio. Yeah. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah. All right. So now we do everything. I mean, your dentist, your doctor, mm -hmm. you have the hospital. We now have talent. We have people like you, you know, beautiful women. Miss America, you know, the little Miss America came on. We do oh, dancing really? school, oh, kids, you know, mm -hmm. whoever wants, you know, and then what you get here is you get a video, but mm -hmm. one third the price of when you go get a video done. Yeah. And so that's the nice part of it. And then you could put it on your thing every day. So that's what we do here. So, and Excellent. then I do marketing on the side if you ever need anything. And other kinds of things, like help people. They call uh, the breakfast club who to call when you don't know where to go. <laughs> and that's what I do. I mean, I got someone who's cemetery plot back three weeks ago because they, they sold it because they didn't pay his bill. Wow. So it's like... And you got it back for him? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's... But, you know, you have to worm your way to get it. You yeah. Know? You can't just be that nice. So, but 
again, the man was sick. He lost his son. So he was so distraught, he never paid the bill on time. I said, you know, you want his doctor know? You want, we'll get you everything you need. And he did get it back. But today, you got to be very careful. People want to take advantage of you, especially uh-huh. seniors. Oh, I've heard some horror stories. Uh, a, a, a good a friend of, of mine's father, a couple of times, fell for the social security scam. And oh, ended up yes, thousands, and uh, it's yeah. just the dad. How can you? How can you? Do? Well, he sounded professional on the phone, mm. and well, I just well, yeah. yeah, I learn things every day because I just learned something because somebody called me. Um, did you know that if you have trouble paying your tax bill? Okay, like seniors do sometimes, you can get a senior advocate at the IRS to help to get your taxes lowered. Oh, okay. I didn't know. That. I found there's a form and everything. So I just did this for somebody. Really? And it's a form, you write the reasons why, and then you get an advocate at the IRS. It takes a long time, but there mm-hmm. is such a thing. Right. There's, there's and that's where, help. you know. You don't know, you don't, if you don't ask, you don't know. So um, my mantra here on the show everywhere is every day, no matter who you are, get up, get dressed, show up. Mm-hmm. You don't know what's going to happen. And that's really uh-huh. how this all happened for us. And that's how I met Greg. I got up, I got dressed, <laughs> I went to the cleaners. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like every day, if you act, show up, speak up. Yes. Show up and speak up. And yes. don't give up. Yeah, and don't, don't give, give up. up. See, we yeah. just we just like did that. We just yes. did that little tag thing. Yes, yes. <laughs> and lots of times when I do marketing for someone, you know, this is what we do. We all sit in a room and we're like, oh, and everyone says something. And then all of a sudden, the tagline comes in. Yeah. But it's the old-fashioned way to do things. Right. Than getting on the computer. And, yeah. you know, it's like I like computers. Thank God I have the show. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't. But there's also that thing of, you know, face-to-face. Yes. And then that's what you do every day. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and then look what it comes out to be. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're very happy to have you on the show. Oh. And obviously, here. we didn't even get in to share it. So you'll get it by when I get home tonight. It'll be yeah. shared to yeah. both of you. Oh, okay, great. And then you'll also get one on your phone. I'll send it to you later. Oh, Sounds nice. good. Thank you. And this, we're going to do some pictures. Jennifer will do that for us today. Oh, all right. And um, then you'll get them too. It's like a two day process. You all know? right. Okay. But if anybody went to G's already, they're seeing it. Yeah. The people you told. Mm-hmm. It's just that we're not seeing oh, them. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so if you're seeing it now, wait a couple of days, a you'll see it again. again. That's right. <laughs> so how do people reach you? Um, I can be reached on uh, lindacollins.nyc. .nyc. Gmail. Okay. okay. Um, or um, through my manager. Teresa Bastian. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, they say everybody needs a manager, right? Yeah. Yeah. Does she get um, you most of your things or do you do a lot on your own? She she um you know, we do we do both, but we coordinate everything. A lot. So right. yeah. Talks her a lot, she's, right? she's 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 so good and so fabulous. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I asked you, are you part of AF after? There was a reason. Are you? Um I'm not a member of um, It's expensive, right? You have to pay every year, right? Yes, you do, but I, I would I'd love to be a member of, of SAG and that's one of my Well goals. that one too. Yeah. Okay. Um, I meant yeah, AFM. SAG. Yeah, AFM American Federation of Musicians, that's a different matter. But okay. That's, mm-hmm. that's for a so different So SAG day. is what a screen actors guild. It's it's very yeah, it's very expensive that's when what you I get thought. to yeah. But did but you know about the, SAG? I found something out about SAG. Like, this is what I find out when we see what's that? SAG has a assisted living that if you're in, you oh, get to go there when you're old. For really? not such an expensive price. My first acting teacher was in that. Um, she was in like a creative building, a building yes. for creatives. Yeah. So I'm like, I want to join SAG because you're going to be with all the movie stars when you get older. <laughs> yes, right. Have a good time. <laughs> so this go. is what I mean about asking questions. Yeah. When I started to do this, I started asking, well, what is SAG? How do I do it? What is IMDb? Yeah. You know, and I'm just learning. So right. someone called me and said, y- your photo's not on IMDb. I go, oh, I have to find out how to do that. You know, just ask questions and you're going to learn so much. All right. All right. So think about that. You're going to get to go into an assisted living that's like for the rich and the famous. <laughs> I'll sing in my own assisted living facility. <laughs> 
So on that note, yes. what is your last again? Your uh, your email, your uh, website. You can uh, you can get all my contact information at www.lessdegan.com. Get my phone number, my email address, see my schedule, and. Uh, I hope we'll see you. I hope He's you'll call me. going to be all over Long Island. going to be all over Long Island. My schedule will be there. Got a lot of fun stuff coming up. And Linda Collins is in so many movies. you got to <laughs> check her out. Google her because she'll show up wherever you Google her, right? Yeah. Or some mm -hmm. of these films. Mm -hmm. And get to the next film festival. And I have and a film on Amazon Prime right now, Perception. Perception. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, so, I'm going to watch that, that this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, just keep doing it. Um, there's a new movie out on a on uh, Amazon, uh, Montauk '77. Okay. One of my friends, he lives in Levittown. Fabulous movie. Five dollars to watch it. You gotta watch it. Everyone in the movie is his family. Oh. He did a fabulous job. They won an award. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's doing great. He was on the show three weeks ago. So that's on that note. On that this note. Thursday, we're going to be at the uh, View Grill. Uh, it's a great restaurant if you ever want to go. It's overlooking a golf course, and um, it's in Glen Cove. Ooh. And Bob DeMotto will be singing there. He's our Bobby Darren singer. Okay. And it's just a great place to go on weekends, brunch, holidays, Thanksgiving. It's very decorated. And it's overlooking all kinds of beautiful golf courses and all that. The food is great. Janine I've, uh, I've is been a great chef. She's been on the show a few times. Mm. And the my idea when you go there, get the lobster tails. They're mm. huge. You get two. You can bring one home for tomorrow. Mm, nice. And the food is good. It's called yeah. the View Grill. Nice. So on that note, that's a wrap.